You move the landing gear handle to the down position and what? There are only two green lights when you're expecting three. This was the surprise TB30 Epsilon pilot Mike Fallucci got recently. Well, I was, uh, I was down in North Carolina flying with uh, the bandit team. They do uh, fly for the flag performance where they do six ship flyovers of uh, NASCAR events and collegiate football games. Uh, when I pitched out on downwind and, and went to put the gear down, uh, the left main gear came down, the, the nose wheel came down, but the right main gear did not come down. It was showing in transit. So Mike left the traffic pattern and performed an emergency gear extension, followed by pulling G's to get the gear to come down. But nothing worked. It was obvious that there was something mechanically uh, blocking the right main gear. because I knew we had to make a decision. I had to make a decision as to where to land the airplane. And my intention was to land gear up. Mike considered the best airport for a gear up landing. Should he fly somewhere with a fire department on the field? He weighed the options and decided to land at Raleigh Executive Airport in Sanford, North Carolina. Even though uh, Raleigh Executive didn't have crash fire rescue on the field, I knew we could call ahead and have a fire truck there, which is what we did. But my concern was all, everything that happens after the landing. So I had all kinds of after the uh, landing support that was available to me, and that was my biggest concern. Even though gear up landings on hard surface runways typically result in relatively minor airframe damage, Mike chose to land in the grass next to the runway. Well, a couple of reasons I didn't want to land on the hard surface. One is because it does more damage to the airplane. The second is it ties up the runway. I mean, if you land on the, on the, on the hard surface, you're going to slide to a stop on the airport and, and the airport's going to be shut down. That's a situation where, where they're motivated to get the airplane off the runway and they don't use proper procedures, they can do more damage to the airplane. So I was, that was a concern of mine. After deciding on Raleigh Executive, Mike flew around to burn off fuel before setting up to land. I, I carried power into the approach just like I normally do with this airplane and then in the flare pulled the power back and pulled the mixture out to idle cutoff. The flaps are not deployed so much that, they, that I was going to damage the flap system. My objective was to slow the airplane as much as possible, have the minimum impact energy and then slide it in on the, on the belly. The airplane came to rest and my backseater popped the canopy and jumped out and uh, I secured the airplane and, and that, was, that was the end. The airplane had relatively minor damage, the prop was destroyed, the engine needed to be inspected, and there was some metal damage to the belly. So what caused the gear failure? Well, there was a clamp in the right main wheel well that failed and released a, a, a bundle of cables that was, that was held securely in place against the wheel well bulkhead. When those cables came free and the, and the right main landing gear came down, the right main gear became entangled in the cables and, and that was it. There, were, there was no way that the gear was going to come down after that. Unlike some in-flight emergencies, Mike had a major advantage in this one, lots of time. Because we had over an hour and a half to fly around and burn fuel off, so we had plenty of time to plan, plenty of time to have people survey the runway for us. Of course, we had the wingman with us the whole time. And uh, so that, that made it uh, uh, easier than, say, an engine failure, and then you've got to pick out a place to, to land the airplane. Right. Mike has flown in the military, airlines, he's flown gliders, and general aviation aircraft for decades. And this was the first and hopefully his last gear up landing. I uh, never have done one before. hope I never have to do one again. <laughs> Dave Hirschman, AOPA Live.